Good evening. Uh, this is Dr. I'm Dr. Tova Goldfein, and this is TMS Roundtable Recovery. Uh, I'm supposed to be live tonight, and I am live tonight, but I'm alone, and I'm going to speak for a few minutes. My guests could not join me in the last minute because uh, Dr. Yoni Arthur is living in Florida and is in the eye of the storm, let's say, and sending blessings to anyone in Florida or along the coast experiencing the hurricane and nature's fury. Um, so she had to reschedule and we're gonna meet in November with her father, Dr. Jeffrey Shames, who is an amazing physical uh, rehabilitation doctor in Israel. And they're both very mind body um, minded and um, him and his work, Dr. Jeffrey and his work and Dr. Yoni Arthur is doing amazing healing with chronic headaches, tinnitus, post concussion syndrome, chronic dizziness. And I have to say that um, I did a little bit of studying on her website and uh, she has a, a really thorough program, free program for anybody to sign up and learn a lot about why we have chronic headaches, why we have chronic dizziness, why we have tinnitus, the reason why after post-concussion, which is usually a whiplash, sometimes a whiplash, why the concussion, why the symptoms persist. And, you know, it is a neuroplastic condition. And so rather than talk about that, I'd love you to do her program. I've posted it on my Facebook page and I'm going to post it again uh, when I say goodbye. It's so informative. And we can learn so much about healing and um, just do the program. It's really, really, really very helpful. And you'll learn a lot and possibly not struggle, possibly end your suffering with various chronic pain. And one thing I'll say about tonight is, is I probably didn't realize that, and she explains it, that we all have sounds in our ears. It's coming from the brain and some of us are so sensitive to it. And, and so it's, it's, uh, it's like a number 10. It's like the dial is turned up and some of us just notice it. I noticed it today. I noticed a couple different sounds in my ears and I was just, it wasn't that interesting. And then I focus on something else. And so she explains it, how it's coming from the nervous system, coming from the brain. I need to learn more about it, but it gave me the confidence to say that problems in the ears and the eyes, people suffering with taste and burning mouth and everything from A to Z, it's coming from your brain and that's where the solution is. And it doesn't mean you're weak or ill or broken. It means you just have to learn. You have to unlearn. We have to relearn, build new circuits, build new neuropathways, understand the brain body connection, understand how our nervous system works, understand our relationship with our symptoms. And then I, you know, I revert back to all of Dr. Schubiner's, you know, the six F's, you know, that we focus on it, that we fight it, that we try to figure it out, that we um, focus. Did I say focus? <laughs> and this is this is some great information. You know, I have all this. I put it on my my page, page and I'm willing to send it again. Because guess what? We have to repeat and repeat and repeat. We have to do it over and over again. And you know what, that's the name of the game, patience. And I wanna talk about one more thing this evening. So I'm showing up on a Wednesday night without my guests and I'm just gonna speak a few minutes and say good night. Um, we have a 
I will talk a little bit about who's coming next week, but more so I wanted to leave my listeners with um, the fact that Dr. Yoni Arthur will return in November. I'm sorry that we couldn't have the broadcast tonight with her and her father. And we're sending blessings to everyone in the eye of this hurricane. I wanna talk about um, something very close to my heart at this time. And it may help you with healing. It may help you with some of the deep emotions that you may be repressing. Again, we all repress emotions. We all say, oh, you know, I'm not gonna go there. I don't wanna cry. I'll stop my tears. I don't wanna be sad now. Or, uh, you know, we all have that. But for some of us, when we repress the emotions, the brain and conscious mind interpret it as a threat and then begins the cycle begins the fear pain cycle the anger pain cycle begins the sadness pain cycle and then the body starts to have a mind of its own this is another another broadcast but i wanted to talk about one emotion and it's it's a it's a chemical emotion meaning gratitude is chemical Compassion is a chemical reaction in your brain. Anger creates a reaction in your brain. And what I want to talk about for a few minutes is forgiveness. It is the time in my um, tradition, the new year, and now comes the time between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur where we ask for forgiveness and I believe in asking for forgiveness every day of the year <laughs> because there's always um, ebbs and flows in our emotional life. But if in your life there's somebody or something or some place or some memory where you're holding on to and maybe feeling angry, feeling guilt, feeling shame, feeling sadness, feeling rejection, it'll appear through your body as you holding on to something. And let's say, again, your unconscious mind interprets this as a threat and your brain begins to live in a state of fight and flight, thinking there's always a lion coming or a fire. And all you're doing is just holding on to some anger, or some rejection, or some loss, or some abandonment. So the word forgiveness, it's one of the, it, it's actually one of the, the main, uh, you know, there's like five or six emotions, uh, fear, anger, sadness, shame, guilt, that uh, activate. These are the, some of the emotions that have been studied that can activate the amygdala and kind of um, put the brain in a state of fight and flight. So forgiveness is not one of those. Forgiveness is more of a, of a, of a reaction or, or a response. So when I talk about uh, forgiveness, and I've talked about this with Dr. Hanscom because he recommends the Dr. Fred Luskin's Forgive for Good, the book Forgive for Good, so forgiveness does create a chemical reaction. It allows you to rather let go in order to move on. It's like I'm taking the foot off the brake in order to move forward. Because when we're angry or resentful and not forgiving something or someone we're in a state of conflict. And what I have found with many clients and talking to so many amazing people that have healed and speaking with professionals is that most of the time we need to forgive ourselves. This, this is the deepest, most 
important relationship that you'll have. And for so many of us in chronic pain and with autoimmune symptoms, we're in a state of conflict. We're in a state of where the, the brain is protecting us. And this is an opportunity to possibly forgive yourself if there's anyone that you're angry at or anyone you're, you have felt rejected from, anyone that you have had some trauma. I'm just recommending to see it as an option, to see forgiving that person, place, or thing, or yourself, even for small things, big things, it's very important to, to go deeper. And Rose taught me this. When you're feeling some discomfort, having some autoimmune symptoms, Stop for a minute, take a deep breath. Ask yourself, what's going on? What, what else is going on? Besides that I'm feeling uncomfortable, what could be going on deeper? What could be triggering? What could be causing my brain to create inflammatory response, to create a tight muscle? What could be causing my brain to go into fight or flight to protect me? And then what Rose taught me was stop for a minute, check the evidence, nothing physical going on. I'm fine. Went to the doctor. Everything's good. Tests are good. What? would be triggering this chronic pain. And if you can't figure it out, it's okay too. But then go to the possible feelings. Could it be anger, fear, sadness? Could you be feeling guilty about something? Think about it for a minute. Maybe you want to write in your journal. Maybe you don't. Maybe you want to just go for a run. Maybe you want to have a cigarette. Maybe you want to have a joint. What I'm asking you to do is just stop for a minute, go deep inside, and be able to witness yourself. Be able to observe and recognize. And then just accept. Just be aware. Just be aware of what's going on. Be aware of the interaction between the voice and your own voice. Be aware of what could be happening between your conscious mind and your unconscious mind. Be the bridge. Be the bridge between your unconscious and conscious mind. And I, I posted something the other night that I learned from the Dispenza work that your thoughts are footprints on your brain and you have an opportunity to rewire by understanding that you can change your thoughts, that you can actually fire and wire new nor circuit by observing, recognizing, understanding, being aware, even if it's a thought that's hurting you or that you don't like the mere fact of watching it, observing it can help you fire differently. And so forgiveness is an opportunity to pick yourself up, move on, fall and get up, fall and get up with this unconditional love and radical forgiveness and radical acceptance. <clears throat> and during this time of the year, for so many people, it's a time to reflect and there's lots of strange things going on in the world. There's disasters in nature. There's wars in different parts of the country, in different parts of the world. There's crazy things going on. And so 
I'm going to keep working on forgiveness. And I'd like you to also, I'd like you to think about who or what or maybe you want to forgive. And the most important thing is yourself. Because you are all doing the best you can. I know that without even knowing you, I know you're doing the best you can. And even when you screw up, I know you can forgive yourself because you did the best you can in that moment. And this is a powerful concept. So in honor of forgiveness, in honor of blessings, in honor of um, any, any God that you may be honoring, any divine source that you might be honoring, any divine wisdom that you might be leaning into, I just send you enormous strength and courage, enormous blessings from my home to yours. And we'll leave this evening with just a little sprinkle of forgiveness. Thank you for listening. Next week, I'm so excited. I'm always excited about my broadcast. Next week, we're going to be meeting with Dr. Brad um, Fanistil. He's an amazing doctor in Colorado. I will post his TED talk also. He has, um, he's an internist that came into the mind body work, just like Dr. Trubiner and Dr. Hanscom, Dr. Schechter and Dr. Sarno, because he started to recognize that people <laughs> struggle and suffer so much from the mind and body. And that's where the solution is. So here's to solutions and bless your heart. See you next week.